Interesting Consents Committee, um, Part A, reports the first resolution, which is uh, rapidly coming to the screen, is Traffic and Parking Bylaw Amendment 2014, moved by David East and seconded by Tim Scandrett. If um, I could just briefly yep. talk to these. Please uh, talk to it. Um, look, the first, um, first bylaw, bylaw is the Traffic and Parking Bylaw. It's an amendment of the existing bylaw. And uh, if I could just highlight the um, <clears throat> major points that are being altered in this bylaw. Uh, the first one is really just um, making provision for alternative means of payment uh, to be made for parking, um, such as cell phones and things like that, ultimately. Uh, and the second um, point of uh, significant difference to this bylaw is just around shared paths and zones, um, mechanisms to create zones <coughs> with respect to council roads and, and really clarifying the status of shared paths. So they are, there are a few other little bits and pieces with the um, traffic and parking bylaw, but that's substantively the major changes. So that with public notice, it will and, it'll come back the to a hearings really, panel, and then really uh, we are just asking for this now to go out for public consultation um, to bring it back for uh, final approval. That's fine. So, yes, Vicky. Can I just ask two questions that I've been asked about this? Um, one is Yike bikes. Where do they fit? And the second is those um, electric-powered bicycles. Where do they fit? In, in terms of parking? No, in terms of the shared paths. <coughs> shared paths. Um, I can't quite answer that one. Stuff, but yeah, no, I, I can see 3.5. I'm just not sure whether an electrified bicycle, of which there are a number in the city, or a yike bike is de defined as how. No, <laughs> they're very mobile people. <laughs> I'll, de I'll, defer, I'll defer to um, the end of the table. <laughs> So in terms of the current bylaw, a vehicle is defined, um, it has the same definition as a vehicle in the Land Transport Act, and that's quite broad, so that covers bicycles and um, contrivances equipped with wheels, tracks or revolving runners on which it moves or is moved. So um, the shared paths at the moment, they would, you would think that they would come under... Um, A, w a wheeled recreation device, yeah, that's normally a skateboard or a scooter. Right, so if you're sitting on it, it's got an electric motor and wheels, or it's got an electric capacity and also a bicycle, What? where does it fit? I wasn't able to answer the question, that's why I was... <laughs> This won't be um, the subject of the bylaw, this is, this is a consequence of a It'll new... It'll be an interpretation of the bylaw. Well, it's, a, it's an interpretation of the existing bylaw, oh, though, yeah. presumably. So there's going to be a new clause that goes into the bylaw that authorises shared paths, mm. which is a new thing that's come into the Land Transport Road User Rule. And shared paths um, are for, it says at the moment, this is following the Land Transport Road User Rule, mm. pedestrians, cyclists, riders of mobility devices, riders of wheeled recreational devices. Now, if you want, we can broaden that out <coughs> to wheeled recreational devices like skateboards and scooters, they're not all used for recreation, some of them are used for transport, so it might pay to expand on on that recreational or... But it may be that mechanised is not in, intended to be included, so I think we have to be explicit, and I think that's the question you're being mm, asked. Is, yeah, these um, are... These are, are motor, uh, motorised <coughs> bicycles, um, you know, or variations thereof, as in the yike bike, um, are they are they intended to have access to these shared paths? Mm. Well, That's a question. This is the first time I've considered that, I have to be honest, but if, if you want them to have access to the shared paths, then we can broaden the new Clause 14B to include um, those types of devices. Or it becomes a uh, part of the submissions process, and when it comes back, we amend the... Well, they exist. Well, hang so on. We should I, 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 would, I would have thought that these were existing definitions from another bylaw. Are they not? Uh, no. This bylaw is, is, is not being um, 
revoked and replaced. It's amending the existing bylaw. So we would be, unless we are altering the definitions in the existing bylaw, what's in there would, would remain. Yeah, well, that was my point. It must already refer to what the definitions are. Does it not? It, it doesn't at the moment because the shared paths are a new thing. So what we've done is brought out, um, we've looked at other councils that have had clauses about shared paths and also the land transport road user rule and brought and come up with our own clause for shared paths, which is the new proposed for I, I understand B. that. I wasn't talking about the shared paths. I was talking about what was um, Definition. the, the definitions of... Um, cyclists, pedestrians, riders of mobility devices and riders of wheeled recreational devices. Oh, it's, it's, so, so uh, riders of wheeled recreational devices are brand new definition. Uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor, apparently Mr Adamson can help with that. Okay. <laughs> Shared zones, it's a new concept come to New Zealand and Australia and you'll find them. Yep. And I think basically they've got their definition of um, rules and traffic signs. Obviously this is I think, help me here, I haven't read the details of the bylaw, but the bylaw is just allowing you, if you feel are appropriate, to actually set up some of those yeah. within. There are things like maximum 10 kilometre an hour speed limits in those, but the issue, if you actually decide then you want another definition of it, you're actually going to have a subset definition that maybe the, the general public, when they come here, will think, well, I can do this in Auckland in a shared zone, and if you have a separate rule. So basically it's allowing you to set up shared zones if you wish to, um, but I would be suggesting that we would be best to keep with the definition that sit uh, with Australia and New Zealand being adopted under the um, um, living street for New Zealand, where pedestrian, cyclists and motorised traffic, they say, um, share the same road space. Special rules and speed limits apply, but basically this is just empowering, I think, to them to set them up if they want them. Yes. That doesn't actually I appreciate that, Dave. That's not the question. The yeah. Yoke bike comes from Christchurch, right? So there are a number of them on the road. There are also a, quite a number of, of people riding bikes which have the capacity to become ele uh, electric powered, but they are also pedal powered. Yeah. And there's quite a number of those people around. All they want to know is whether they fit under these definitions and where they fit, given that perhaps the definitions haven't kept up with the inventiveness of people. Okay, so at the moment our bylaw doesn't define the term pedestrians or cyclists, mobility devices or wheeled recreational devices, but a pedestrian is defined and we can put, pull in definitions if you right. from the road tra land transport road user rule, so there is a definition of pedestrian. It's not really pedestrian, that's the <laughs> issue. I can imagine what a pedestrian well, what, is. What we're, what we're trying to do is, is did the... Did, did, did we refer to this matter? I mean, is this matter explicit in the bylaw that says that a, mo a, a motorised cycle is allowed to be used in these shared zones? No, it's no. not explicit, so, so it's unclear at the moment. But is it appropriate that we go out to consultation just by putting it in by way of an amendment at a, at a, at a council meeting when we haven't had any sort of the pros and cons put to them? Because I presume that the Regs and Con Consents Committee sort of signed off on the, on the policy but hasn't turned its attention to this issue. Correct. Is it safe to go out to consult on a document that hasn't really had any consideration given to this issue, whether motorised um, cycles are included? From, from my reading of the uh, definitions, they are included and they're included in, and so a cyclist in rules, the, the, the shared zone sets some rules for pedestrians and then everyone else has to give way and they'll put cyclists in any other motorised vehicle, whether it be a mobility scooter or anything like that, in that second category. So basically um, the pedestrian has absolute right of way and everything else, whether you be a cycle, a scooter, uh, anything else, has actually got to give way, look after that. So it's, it's good yeah. that, sorry? On a road, right? Very simple. They go on the on this sort of thing, but but there are some things now out.
slightly outside the scope of NZTA's definitions or whoever's definitions, and we need to address them because they, there are a number of them in Christchurch, and they will ask because they already have. Look, I, I just think that the, 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 issue, the issue hasn't been um, raised, so we're raising it now. Yeah. The question is, is do we ask for that um, to be resolved in favour of uh, the um, addition of uh, motorised um, cycles, or do we ask for just another bit of work to be done on it and to report back in a couple of weeks' time? I think I would favour the the latter, myself. Yep. Um, okay, so so let's uh, let's defer this decision and ask for a um, report oh. back to the next council meeting sorry. on the. Oh, yep. Sorry, excuse me. I was just going to say that um, the proposal was with this amendment to save costs. We were going to put it out for consultation with the other bylaws as well. So it would all go together in one package and they could all be consulted on together. So I'm, I'm just not quite sure if we... Sorry? Going out to consultations, all these things will come out during that process. All right, well... 5 .5. Look, I agree with Ref too, and I think that 3.6 encapsulates it quite well, that Council was determining here the priority for users um, on a shared path. So that's really what it's about, isn't it? I don't yeah, see so what we so need to what delay. what we don't know is actually existing law, which is whether these um, mm. these uh, motorised cycles are allowed to use footpaths under current law, and that is something we don't know. So, um, so no, 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 footpaths because they won't they won't be shared zones unless they already are off the road. So, um, so that's what we're trying to do, is create a shared path. Right? I know that. Well, I think what I'm trying to say is, is that the answer to the question probably lies in the existing arrangements for off-road um, transport that is not a cycle but a motorised cycle. So, so, so we can find the answer to that. It doesn't stop us going out to consultation. So just a question to staff then. Does the definition wheeled recreational devices, is that broad enough... To no, the, what the question is whether it's motorised or not and whether it's allowed to use the footpath in the first place because if it's allowed to use the footpath in the first place then it will be allowed to use these shared zones um, once this bylaw is through. The David. Ministry of Transport have got a definition here and it says here power assisted cycles. Power assisted cycles fitted with an electric auxiliary propulsion motor that have a combined maximum power output not exceeding 300 watts, which I don't know how much that is, right. uh, are not motor vehicles and are treated as ordinary cycles. Thank you. This that, means that, is that the you answer cannot to the question. And the same with skateboards. Apparently yep. you can get skateboards with motors on them and yep. you can get something else. So that is the answer Scooters. to the... That's actually the answer yeah, to the, the question, question that Vicky asked right at the very start. That's the definition. Yep. So, and I think Thank we you. need to keep that definition... Yep, so no, I'd, I'm not proposing that no. we change a statutory definition. So, oh. I will put the motion, all those in favour say aye, those opposed say no, that's carried. That's your fault, I blame you for that. Um, Do I have the second... Um, <laughs> the second, second one is uh, Parks and Reserves <coughs> by law. Second by law is the Parks and Reserves. So that's David moved and seconded by Tim Scandrup. Yep. And this one essentially we are revoking the existing Parks and Reserves bylaw and replacing with Parks and Reserves bylaw 2014. Um, some of the main changes to this one are adding clause 4 where we are recognising a police officer as an enforcement um, officer, which apparently wasn't in the original reserve um, uh, bylaw. There's a clause on interference with reserves um, where we're looking at damage, uh, destruction and damage to uh, park assets, particularly burial or scattering of ashes um, in um, reserves. Uh, not the, not, we're not going the Auckland way and charging for it, but there are instances where ashes have been um, scattered in reserves on plants that are intolerant to ashes, so we want to tidy that one up, and, and another another one probably might be of interest to Councillor Buck, um, taking of fruit and nuts in a manner to likely to damage a, a, a tree, so that's part of that one. 
Um, we're also uh, looking to uh, insert a, uh, improve um, the, the bylaw with relationship to behaviour and reserves, um, obstructing, interfering with another person or person's use or enjoyment of reserves, uh, tightening up on vehicles uh, with, in terms of their access, again with also in relation to shared paths, illegal parking, etc. Um, clause 14, just tidying up on sporting and other events, um, organised events fees, and a new clause 18, just providing exemptions, uh, new exemptions from um, uh, fees and charges to the Parks and Reserves uh, Act. So they are the sort of main changes. Staff may want to add a couple more if possible, but um, or answer any questions. But so, um, I'm Yanni. Yeah, I just want to pick up on the um, the parking issues and vehicle access issues in parks and reserves. And Hagley Park comes to mind, um, but also parking on grass verges as well. I don't know; it may have been in the other one. But w what are we actually doing to stop that behaviour, given the damage that it causes? Are, are we enabling us to, to seek compensation from the people that are doing the damage? I don't know that actually the. Um bylaw addresses parking on the booms. Yeah, no, sorry, that's probably the previous one. But for this one, in terms of where, where you... Like, I went past Hagley Park the other day and it's like a whole mobile village sets up when they've got rugby games on the weekend. Coffee stalls and food carts and everything. In the middle of winter, driving onto Hagley Park seems like, you know, and then all the parking around it seems kind of a little bit unfair that we pick up the maintenance cost and people can just park willy-nilly. So is there any consideration given to um, trying to address that in a more proactive manner? Not in this bylaw. Um, not, not, in, not in this bylaw, except that you can only park in the areas set aside for parks, um, for parking. So it would be in breach of the bylaws. I, I suspect it's also in breach of our traffic and parking bylaw. Um, so we could... In, I'm pretty sure with Hagley Park, you know, there, it, there are areas where it's um, that it's in breach of our traffic and parking bylaw, so we could enforce it in that way. But For example, a clause in here that said um, if you park on a public park and you cause damage, you're liable for making it right, making it good. Is I that think that probably that could... um, may relate more to. Um, Clause 14 for sporting and other events where we are allowing part of a park to be utilised for a particular event and, and then it's, it becomes uh, an issue with the, the fees and charges for that event and, and associated parking with that event as well. So that's, that's probably where it, where it lies rather than... Uh, Explicitly making provision for parking on the reserve. I'd just like to follow up from what Yanni's saying, though. The the boom that that goes right along uh, uh, Dean's Ave is taken up every weekend with vehicles parking, and we're talking they're causing potholes about this deep all around the edge, and they're actually causing a lot of tra uh, traffic uh, issues driving onto the, onto the boom and then getting off the boom. So it is quite a problem, uh, which is not actually on Hagley Park, but it's around the boom of Hagley Park. I'm not sure whether that's actually part of the park or, or part of legal road. Jane, are you able to can, help? Can I, can I make a suggestion that we, we do come back and get the facts and figures around this? I have a feeling that the parking on Berms um, is a... Is a We've got a bylaw and it's a matter of policing it, but we need to come back and confirm Different that. Different bylaw. Yeah, I'm not sure, but we need to it's confirm that. It's certainly not part of this bylaw. And I also understand there's a cross-council parking team working, so we need to tell you about that. Um, so maybe by way of a, men uh, a memo, and then if it raises other things, we can follow up um, where we need to yeah, get can we add something that where we catch people damaging our parks and reserves that I can't see anything in the bylaw that means... There that is, uh, under Clause 6, an interference with reserves, a, uh, a, a section there that deals with um, uh, destruction or damage of, of park uh, assets. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. So if you catch someone doing that, what is the consequence? I mean, if it's a $50 fine and they've done $6,000 worth of damage, it doesn't seem very fair. So in the breaches of the bylaw, it just says the enforcement officer requests them to stop immediately. The, the bylaw itself has Could got fine quite or? a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to have to go, so Tim? I know that within the park, if you're running an event, as in Hagley Park or any other park, the, the user you play, pays a bond, and it is therefore the parks and re re recreation team or whoever gave them permission to use the park, it's their responsibility to enforce the bond, whether there's been damage or not. However, whether that's been done or to what extent that's been done, uh, I, I have no idea. With regards to the berms, I know that um, along Park Terrace, etc., um, it has been seriously enforced by our, um, our parking units. But around the rugby, I mean, it, it's been there and had been used for some time. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure with regards to the Rolleston Ave... Oh, sorry, the, um, the north... Yeah. the southeast side of it. But it would be more of an enforcement issue rather than... So you're talking about someone actually getting onto a park and doing donuts on a park and... and uh, uh, point of order, please. Yeah. Um, I just wonder how much of this discussion is actually necessary because this is a more of a... Um, process matter to put these out for consultation. consultation. We'll be coming back and working these through. I think that um, I think that that's right. I think that it's important that um, we get these um, bylaws out for consultation. I think the point that Councillor Johansson makes is one that could be a submission that's made um, to it if it's not already addressed in another bylaw. Yeah, I think where the gap for me in this bylaw is, is there's no penalty section. Well, there is. There's penalties in park for parking offences. No, um, for the, this one that we're talking about now, oh, parks and reserves. Oh. Well, unless <coughs> I've overlooked it, but I can't see where there's any penalty. But maybe if... Um, I mean, we can make submissions, but what I worry about is that someone will come in and say, well, you didn't go out for consultation with the penalty section, so you can't add penalties in later. Okay. Um, and then you have to do a whole other process. Yeah, Peter Mitchell might be able to throw some light onto this for us. The council has a general bylaw which covers all the bylaws the council makes. That general bylaw has a penalty provision which links back to local government, which has as a starting point Do you want me to leave this or take it? I'll leave that. Um, okay. Secondly, you asked the question about people putting stalls in a park. The bylaw that you've got in front of you, and I have to Good. Right. Are we all bored of that subject now? <laughs> put that one. Right. OK, can we put that one? Staff recommendation. We've got a mover. Yep. Eastern Scandrit. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, carried. And now we move on to... Yeah, we... tidy up the first one. Apologies. In terms of the dates for consultation. So the first one is untidy and has the wrong dates for consultation. Yes, it's different to all of the others. So it needs to be um, 14 so, July to 15 August. OK, so 6.6 becomes 14 July to 15 August. That's right. OK, nobody's screaming about that. Good. OK, with that change, we'll put that again. Those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, carried. And now we move on to the uh, fire. The third, third policy uh, is the water-related services. Which um, again is a uh, revoke of an existing bylaw and replacing with water supply, wastewater and stormwater bylaw 2014. Um, the current bylaw doesn't really um, clarify, uh, clearly define, I should say, the respective uh, obligations of council, installers, owners, and public in relation to water supply and stormwater systems. And briefly, the um, 
related change there with water supply, it's addressing issues of waste and misuse, contamination, backflow, damaged, unauthorised connection and uh, vulnerability to disruption or restriction. And this is where in the uh, Banks Peninsula area, um, with new rebuilds, there is going to be a requirement to have water retention tanks in those, uh, those areas. Uh, with wastewater, um, wastewater issues, potential damage or misuse of wastewater infrastructure, and on the stormwater, the main issues there are the need to provide council with the ability to control inflow of stormwater into the public stormwater system, control discharge of contaminants into public stormwater system, uh, looking at authorised discharges into the um, public stormwater system, and uh, causing pollution <coughs> downstream or exceeding the capacity of the system, and lastly, just potential damage or misuse of the physical infrastructure of the stormwater system. Cool. In two sentences, Dave, what does it do that you can't current? What does it mean that you can't do that you can do Sorry? now? In two sentences, what's the effect of the bylaw? Well, the principal one really, I think, is just tidying up a lot of um, bits and pieces. But the um, Banks Peninsula. Okay. Um, they have to watch what they do. Attention, thanks. <laughs> Or not. Okay, Phil. Um, thank you, and thank you, David, for explaining that. Um, I, I mentioned to David some, um, well, issues really regarding information and up and um, hot off the press information, if you like, regarding, for example, stormwater and wastewater that the flood task force have dealt with. But I, I don't um, think I think um, Councillor Livingston's point about not relitigating um, it, it is a going up because it, it is going up for consultation. And so I'm, I'm quite happy that, in fact, any new information we could incorporate in, um, into this later. Yep, cool. Yanni, very briefly. Very briefly. Um, there's a real issue with controlling stormwater runoff um, mm. from someone's property into neighbouring properties. Did the committee consider this issue? And is there anything that we could add to this that requires uh, individual property owners to... It's not just about into the public system, it's actually to neighbouring properties. This draft bylaw does give a better control of discharge of stormwater, not a, in general from, from a private over from private property over other properties. Yep. And Pe just before you do, Yanni, Peter just wanted to add a sentence to that. I, I think this is in terms of the council and managing the public water supply system. You you asked a question about runoff from one private landowner to another. That would not be encompassed in terms of a buying or not some of the council um. buying or that. It's a civil issue between two landowners. The reason it impacts on us is where we've got areas of like land mass movement We've got water just streaming down from earthquake neglected properties that have been oh. damaged that are just being left unkempt. Okay, just let him answer it, Yanni. Yeah, but yeah. Well, that, well, that wouldn't be an issue in terms of, of this bylaw, and it never has been from that perspective. Okay. Yeah, that would be a separate I'm trying to find solutions to the problem. Okay, but it's obviously not found in this bylaw. Not in this bylaw, no. Yeah. I think there is one, one um, sort of overarching statement in the bylaw that we need stronger bylaw provisions for stormwater. To gain desired the desired level of control over stormwater inflows, so the whole package is looking at that sort of uh, control of of um, inflows into our stormwater uh, system. Okay. Um, perhaps I could uh, draw the council's attention to the proposed clause 34K, which says unless authorised by the council, no person may allow stormwater originating from within or flowing into their land to discharge onto or into a neighbouring property other than what would naturally occur from a pre-developed condition in a manner that is likely to cause nuisance or damage unless the discharge is authorised by resource consent from Environment Canterbury. Excellent. Thank you. We'll just send Peter into the corner for the moment. <laughs> okay. 
Yep. Here you go. Excellent. Thank you very much for correcting us. Note that there is a recommendation that, that this may also become part of the district plan or it may not, and so we might look at it again after the district plan goes through. But I'm very supportive of the rainwater tanks. I'd like to see them in all new builds, actually. I know there's a cost to the builder, um, but um, the benefits are huge. So it's um, just Thank you. comment there. Good. Moved Councillor East, seconded Councillor Cotter, thirded Councillor Johansson. I'll put just, um, the requirement in Banks Peninsula to put in the tanks is something I thought we took out of the district plan requirements. So I was just kind of, are we doing something different in the bylaw than what we're doing in the district plan? Or? I think the district plan probably a wee bit outside of yeah, the area of expertise. Rather, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. You, you, it, well, it's not really, we're not debating the district plan, so it's unfair to ask that question. Making a bylaw that's got, we're going out for consultation with the district plan, and my understanding was we removed the requirement to have a water collection tank. We're now bringing in a bylaw. I just want to make sure it's not doing something contrary to what we're doing in the district plan, so it's aligned. But if it's completely separate or different, happy to leave it. But I do think it's silly to go up for a consultation. One thing saying you have to have a tank, the other saying no, you don't. Can it's you just only check for new that? Builds, you know. Can you just check that before it goes out? And if it is in conflict, let us know, especially him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Can I put it moved second? Uh, yeah, moved and seconded. I'll put those, that. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, carried. Yay, another bylaw. Um, yeah, the next one is um, probably the most contentious one for the city is the cruising bylaw. Um, we're proposing to revoke the cruising bylaw 2010 and replace it with the cruising and prohibited times on roads bylaw 2014. Um, the major points uh, for this change bylaw are a more prohibited times on roads uh, is going to move from the traffic and parking bylaw into the new bylaw, um, hopefully sending a consistent message out to road users. Secondly, um, all restrictions regarding cruising will apply seven days a week, 10 o'clock till 5pm. Uh, thirdly, including a provision allowing the consideration of the views and preferences of persons affected by uh, this nuisance value to be considered in any resolution to prohibit cruising on, on part of or all of any road. And lastly, um, we are proposing that we'll extend the period for repeated driving from 60 minutes to four hours which means that they can't, um, cruising... So you can't come back from getting your coffee within 60 minutes? ..can't go back the same track within four hours. Really? You can't go up and down the same piece of road within four hours? Nope. How do we cope with Rickerton Road? Well, they can't do it. They do it once and they can't come back for another four hours. So once you get home, you have to stay there for the next four hours, do you? Well, you can go and cruise somewhere else, but you can't, you can't go back over the same piece. You can't just sort of keep going round and round and, and an hour's time and stop and then go and do the four highly, hours. Highly time. supported by the police. Highly supported by the what police. What if you lost? Sorry? What if you lost? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dave. I'll, be, I'll take what it very lost? seriously. Yeah, you shouldn't be out there. Sorry. Right, I'm sure somebody wanted to speak on this. No? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Jamie. I don't want to speak on it. Why only four hours? It almost seems len too lenient. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go and what, get your what Christmas was decorations. Well, no, no, but I'm saying where did that come from? Like, why don't you say 24 hours? Well, once, once, what was happening apparently, if we look at, there was a problem, say, in Beely Ave. This is too long for me. They, and they were doing a circuit, Beely Ave, Fitzgerald Ave. Mm -hmm. coming back down, just going round and round and round. So um, the, there was a, a, the bylaw said that they couldn't do that with, with, within an hour, so they were going so far, parking up for a while until yeah. the hour ticked over mm -hmm. and then doing it again yeah. and again and again. Yeah. So now every night. Yeah. they do their circuit and they can't come back for four hours. 
and the police, the police are extremely supportive of this move. They've, they've obviously got a handle on, on what's happening out there. They know where it's happening and why it's happening and who's involved. And um, you know, so if, we, if it's restricted to one period... No, I, I get all that, Dave. I guess my question really was, though, how did they come up with the rationale for four hours and why wasn't it something like six hours or 12 hours? Because um, if you did this at six o'clock, you could be back you know, in the same night. You could, but you could only do it twice. Right, Yanni. I, I have really strong concerns about this. I, I cannot see how this could be reasonable under the Bill of Rights. Um, this is a serious infringement on people's liberties, and I appreciate that there's a balance between the nuisance that's being caused, but, but just think about people that work at McDonald's at night or work in 24-hour shifts who might actually have different patterns of doing things. To be limited to be only to drive, if you lived on one of these roads, twice in four hours, if you're going to work, coming back from work, going to visit a friend. I, I just think that's that's far too draconian. I think so, yeah, you know, I, I just, I, I really question whether we've, we've tested this through the Bill of Rights. And I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to support two hours. I, I could live with that. But four hours seems incredibly, um, you know, long period of time. And I just cannot see... I think, Councillor Johansson, if you're even one hour, you're potentially infringing on someone's potentially Bill of Rights. Can, can um, I? So, I mean, we're talking about here a, a, of a convoy of, of vehicles continually driving around the city. So um, one car or two cars is never going to be picked up, but a convoy is, and that's the problem. We've got areas of our city that are sub subjected on a nightly basis to a convoy of cars that just keep continually roaming around the city. Can, so. can, can we be clear? Would you like to explain to us, just in terms of this being allowed on this track of road over four hours, does this relate to only convoys of cars or individual drivers or how does it work? Yes, the definition for cruising is that you must be driving repeatedly in the same direction over the same section of road in a motor vehicle in a manner that draws attention to the power or sound of the engine of the motor vehicle using, being driven or creates a convoy that is formed otherwise than in trade or impedes the traffic flow. So it isn't just a single car or people going backwards and forwards. Unless their exhaust is broken. Oh, okay. oh well, yeah. in a loud car, yes. Yeah, okay. Just clarification from Yanni's question about the Human Rights Commission. Um, so rights. the recommendation is the proposed bylaw is not inconsistent with that act. Can we have some explanation on, on that, please? Um, in, the, in, in our legal advice, it says that uh, the prohibi the, a prohibition on cruising does not prevent a person from driving on the particular streets involved in the prohibition, only that they can't undertake cruising. And similarly, for the prohibi prohibition on driving at roads at certain times, um, doesn't provide a person with a legitimate reason for, um, for driving on that road. They're allowed to do so. So if they're delivering something or if they live on there, that's fine. And then further legal advice says that the benefits to local residents, the temporal and other exceptions to the limitations, and the degree of harm the bylaw is seeking to prevent combine to make the bylaw reasonable and subsequently not repugnant to the general laws of New Zealand or the Bill of Rights. That's very helpful, thank you. And I, I presume that with council owning the roads, we have a right to determine how they're used? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or debate? No? Paul. It, it has been a major issue in the city for some time. Uh, I know the, uh, the motel, motel is down uh, Beely yes. Ave, mm. the hotels in the city, uh, it's been a major, major problem uh, for the city. And it actually is really off-putting for visitors into the city. So uh, I'm actually reasonably supportive of this. I think uh, we do need to do something about it. We need to send a clear message that we're not going to tolerate uh, behaviour that actually destroys the amenity for the wider public. Okay, so it's moved Councillor East, seconded Councillor Lonsdale. Any further debate? 
If not, I'll put it. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Carried. Item 5, Urban Fire Safety Bylaw.